Welcome to MFA's Single Session Workshop, This Will Knock Your Sockets Off. Because it's a single session workshop, um, I want you to get the most out of it. So this is a preview of what you're going to be doing during the workshop. Now, we're going to provide you a lot of examples, but if you're uncomfortable with some of the things you're going to see in this preview, again, you may opt to um, back out of the workshop or, you know, Get yourself prepared for it because you're excited about what you can do with socket programming. So what is socket programming? It's a way of creating a communication link between two separate programs so they can uh, send and receive information. You know, applications of this would be things such as chat rooms, multiplayer video games, or maybe communicating with a physical device. In any case, socket programming is very powerful because it provides a real-time you know communication link between these two applications in order to get the most out of this workshop uh, obviously you should have a computer uh, you're gonna need to have Python installed access to the command prompt slash terminal again if you're on a Mac and some kind of a text editor uh, IDE uh, you're gonna see that in the video I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code but again you're more than welcome to use any kind of editor to modify the examples we'll be giving, uh, giving you. Some basic programming knowledge will go a long way uh, because, because the examples are going to be given to you. Uh, again, in order to appreciate some of the things that are going on there and also to be able to kind of take the examples we give you and the guided walkthroughs uh, a little bit further, you know, having a basic programming knowledge uh, will be very useful. All right, so let's get to, it, to our example. So I'm personally going to use, let me close this, actually, well, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. Again, it's a free software. You can download it um, however you decide uh, to modify the examples we're going to give you. I also have a folder on my desktop, which I'm going to bring the code in. And again, if you have a preference on a different IDE, you're more than welcome to use it. But before we look at the code, I want to run through an example to kind of give you a motivation as to what socket programming can do. Now, the examples I'll be showing you, I'm going to be doing them on the same computer. But these two separate programs that we're talking about that are going to be communicating can be on separate computers. But again, I really couldn't envision how to video two different screens on two different uh, computers at the same time. So I'm using just the one computer. So I'm going to open up two command prompts where I'll be running the files. And I think that should be enough. So I'm going to do CD desktop because uh, that's where I have them stored in a folder called this will knock your socket off and explore one. And I'll open this one up a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And just to show you, uh, the two files we have are a client program and a server program. These are the two files that are going to communicate with each other. Now, to kind of mimic the idea that they're in separate locations, you'll see that I'm using two different windows. One that's going to run the uh, server program, the other one that's going to run the client program. So on this side, I'm going to type in Python server.py. And now the server's running. It's listening. On this side, I'm going to type in client.py. And you'll see immediately that the server acknowledged the fact that it got a connection from the client. Now, on the client side, it's waiting for you to type something to send to the server. So I'm going to type in hi. And you'll see that the server program received the high, and now the server program has the opportunity to send a message back to the client. And let me do this. Uh, so, how are you? I'm fine. So obviously we could keep going on with this, uh, and this is a very basic example, but I would love for you to be able to run this example on your computer prior 
to the workshop because then that kind of uh, will demonstrate to you that you are prepared for the workshop. Let's take a little bit of the code. Again, I'm not going to explain it too much because, uh, again, that's going to be more of what the workshop's about. So I'm going to start with the client program first. So we're going to import a library called Socket, which comes with Python. Uh, we're going to create a Socket object on line 3. Line 4 is important. Uh, this you will have to modify. This is the IP address of the server. Now, again, in my particular uh, environment, this is the address to the server. So let me go ahead and quit out of this uh, and show you how you can do this, uh, at least on a Windows computer. If you're on a Mac, you could definitely Google it. Uh, I'm going to do IP config. So you can see here, once you type in IP, IP config, you're going to get a bunch of information about your network connections. Uh, but when, once you go down a little bit and you find the IPv4 address, this is the number of the server. Now again, because I'm using the same <clears throat> same computer, you got to make sure that you're getting the address of the server. Now again, if I do it on this side, I'm going to get the same address. Like I said, uh, it's on the same computer. But again, if you really wanted to run this example on two different computers that are connected on the same network, make sure that the address that you're getting is the address that where you're going to run the server, not the client. Uh, the client will will transmit its information once it makes a connection with the server. Uh, so let's go back to our example. So once you have the proper IP address to the server, you're going to have to specify a port. Now you'll see it's a very uh, plain number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, a port can pretty much be any number that you want. Uh, it creates a doorway to your computer. Uh, a common number that's used, uh, a port that's used is 80. Uh, 80 is for HTTP traffic, i.e. going on the web, so I would not use 80. Uh, but again, any number, honestly, I wouldn't even change it. Just use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, I'm sure that number is not being used by any port on your computer. And then finally, we have to connect with the server. As you can see here, we're passing the host and the port, so the address and the doorway uh, to the server. And then we have a simple while loop that simply continues until you type the letter Q. Uh, in our while loop, we expect a message. Now remember, this is the client. So the client kind of initiates the conversation. Uh, so we ask the user for some text to send. And using that socket that we created in line three, we send it. You'll notice that we transform our message into, a, into bytes uh, so that we can transmit it. Again, there's other ways you can do this, but this is the way, um, a little disclaimer, I used a little bit of AI to figure out some of this. Uh, so again, this is what we're going to use. Once you send the message, you will then sit there waiting to receive a message from the server. Once you receive the message from the server, then you'll print it and you'll start the whole uh, loop again. Again, until you hit quit. Uh, well, until you hit Q uh, to quit the quit the loop. And then finally, we have to close the connection. Again, you don't want to leave an open connection uh, to another computer. Now let's look at the server side. Now the server side is going to look similar, especially the first five lines. Now the host, again, we talk about the server. We're going to need to use that same address for on the client and the server because, again, we want to connect to the server. Now, on the server program, we're not connecting to ourselves, but what we are doing is we're going to bind our address and the port, allowing us to listen on that port for uh, connections, which is what the next line is, the S escape. It's listening. Well, let me not say that. This is listening. Uh, this is actually going to accept a connection once it's been sent. Now, if you're curious as to what the five is, uh, it represents the number of connections uh, you're going to allow coming in. So once we actually receive a connection, then we go down to the next line. We, we print got a connection from, which is what you saw over here. And again, you're going to see the same, same address because 
the client and the server on the same computer. But if you were on a, if the client was on a different computer, you would be seeing the address of that computer where you're running the client program. And once we get to the while loop, it's pretty much the same. Um, again, we're going to continue on until the server decides to type in uh, Q. Uh, the only difference here is that the first thing that the server does is that it sits there waiting for a message from the client, uh, which is the C.receive. Uh, you'll notice that on this side, uh, we use C as our object because that's the one that we accepted as part of the connection. Again, we're not using S here. And then once we receive a message, then we enable ourselves the opportunity to write a message to, uh, to give back to the client. And then again, using the same code we did on the client side, we use c.send, we convert it into bytes, and then we send it. And then once we quit, we simply close the connection. So hopefully this hasn't been too intimidating. <clears throat> Again, during the workshop, we're going to be providing you more detailed uh, guided walkthroughs for how to you know, take this basic example uh, to a higher level. But I just wanted to, for you to see the type of information that's going to be presented and the type of information you're going to need to work with during the workshop in order to get the most out of it. So hopefully you're excited and enjoy.